Good evening. Welcome to Our Lady, Queen of the Universe. Tonight we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. We would like to welcome all our guests and thank you for being with us. Upcoming events. Tomorrow, there will be a Gopi breakfast from 8.45 to 9.15 a.m. On Thursday, April 11th, Bible study is at 9.30 a.m. and prayer group meets at 7 o'clock p.m. On Sunday, April 14th, Youth Group Discovery Night. And then on Saturday, April 27th, is Night at the Races. Admission is free, but if you would like to buy a horse, they're on sale this weekend after all the masses. Please. <clears throat> please see the bulletin for more information. Now please silence your phones as we begin this holy service. Our opening hymn is number 524, Alleluia, number one. Please stand. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Father. We'll take a moment to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries with more reverence and with more holiness. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge all our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most serious fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very resurrection of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, in grace we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what form they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they are being redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of one mind and heart, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is God. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is God. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel sing.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is a victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The spirit of the one that testifies, and the spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And with that, he had, when he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my fingers into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples again were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hand and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have come to believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples that were not written in this book. But these were written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After the Easter vigil baptism of his little brother, Johnny sobbed in the back seat of the car all the way home. His mother and father asked him what was wrong. He answered, the priest said he wanted us boys to be brought up in a good Catholic family, but I don't want to leave you. 
In today's gospel, Jesus shows that he wants his disciples to stay with him. Within the first week of crucifixion, the disciples were already defecting. The authorities as expected the whole Jesus thing would end in a few weeks. But Jesus made sure that would not happen when he breathed on them and empowered them, giving them signs to help them believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God, so that through this faith they may have life in his name. Today's gospel takes place in a room. A lot of movies, stories, and plays are focused on a single room because it limits the action. How much can happen in a dining room or a bathroom or a coat room? The room is use, useful because it can determine the plot. A war room is where generals formulate battle plans. The boardroom is where capitalists analyze corporations. The atmosphere in a room can be greatly altered when someone enters it. Some people light up the room when they enter. Others can make everyone stop talking when they enter. And some even suck out the air and the oxygen in the room when they enter. You may have read or seen Eugene O'Neill's play, The Iceman Cometh. The whole play takes place in a bar its, unusual, its usual losers, patrons, were there. Among them were men aptly named Tommy Hopeful and Billy Tomorrow, people with illusions of being more successful in better circumstances at some time in the future. Then, in the room, in, then into the room comes an old drinking buddy, but he doesn't drink that night. Instead, he lectures them on their illusions, encouraging them to look at reality and have courage to take charge of their wasted lives. After a while, they had enough, and they threw him out. Is O'Neill telling us we can't live without illusions? Today's gospel scene takes place in a room, the upper room. The occupants are discontent. Something dreadful has happened to their dear friend, and they have no idea how to handle it. Each one has their own private grief to overcome, their own plan for the fractured future. As a group, they are also losers. They had anticipated a bright future, a better world in which they would have a share of authority, something like a heavenly kingdom on earth. But their dreams were shattered the leader was arrested, and the crowd who had cheered him suddenly lost their voice. Ancient enemies became friends long enough to have Jesus executed as a common criminal. Everyone went back to their old pursuits except these few followers in the upper room who didn't know where to go. Their illusions crushed. They looked, like, they looked at each other and wondered what to do. Then suddenly, their old friend burst into the room. It lit up, and so did they. But cautiously, because after all, they had left their friend to die alone. But he offered them his peace, and their old friendship felt restored. And then he sent them into the world as his father had sent him. This room that we are sitting in currently, this church, is a prayer room where we celebrate the Mass, a war room where we strategize ways to spread the kingdom, a boardroom where we plan our community activities, a cutting room where we slash offensive activities, and most importantly, a dining room where the altar is a center, front and center, where we feast with each other and our risen Lord. And how is this atmosphere altered when we entered this common room? Does it light up? Does the spirit rise? Are people inspired to do better? Does our joy prove God's presence? Do we expect our problems to be lightened and our pain to be erased? Are we ready to give up our illusions of facing life alone? Have we finally learned that we are a community, a people of God, 
a body of Christ who depends on each other? Do we leave this room ready to spread the good news that there are no losers, only potential winners? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God from to God, begotten and made, consubstantial of the Father, to him all things were made. Plus money for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Resurrection of the dead. And life the Amen. We bring our special petitions as well as the petitions and the prayers of our brothers and sisters, those who ask us to pray for them in their great needs and sufferings of their life. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the church will rededicate itself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that are trapped in confusion or doubt may be filled with the truth and light of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the young people will recognize God's loving presence, hear his voice, and take up his mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For continued blessings on those celebrating the wedding anniversaries and birthdays this week, Stephen and Olivia Andre, Joseph Hudson, and Amber Reno. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, and for those who have asked for our prayers, especially Peter Quintanella, Patricia Thomas, Barbara Cassani, Mary Lou Zorowski, Mary Wheeler, Margaret Dorsey, Carol Martin, Mark Blackburn, Fred Poris, well, sorry, Rita Ridobalo, Deacon Larry Howell, Helen Bill Cash, Miche Ivy, Marikita Tanatango, and Jose Suarez. And for the safety of those in our armed forces, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, Brandon Stewart, grandson of Paul and Carolyn Shea, and John Evie, Ivy, grandson of Jim and Michi Ivy that God may grant them eternal light, rest, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of Thomas and Agatha Yee, Frank and Ann May Caps, whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, full of mercy, love, and compassion, we, you show mercy to us as always and at every time, O Lord. We put our trust in your mercy and walk together with you always in our day-to-day -day life and find peace with you always. We bring all our prayers and petitions to you through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in our now we are for death. Amen. <clears throat>
Bless Lord, you Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of the human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord, you Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the wine and work of the human hands. It will become for us the spiritual drink. Bless you, Lord, forever. Wash away all my iniquities, Lord, make me clean and pure. Thank you. Thank you. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new life, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. By rising he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in you our praises. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly into his passion, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his and disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, our Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and ministered to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with the Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Baker, our retired Bishop, and all the clergy, remember your servants, Thomas and Agatha, Frank and Anime, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who are united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our departed brothers and sisters and our parents who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her husband, Saint Joseph, with all the blessed apostles and with all the saints and martyrs who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheirs to the eternal life. Praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire to possess thee within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace thee as being already there, and unite myself wholly to thee. Never permit me to be separated from thee. Amen.
soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Let me not be separated from thee. Defend me from the malignant enemy. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, eternal priest, protect all our priests, your servants, from all dangers, and keep them safe in your sacred heart. They are yours, and their life is offered in sacrifice at your altar. Keep them pure of heart and aflame with the love of God and neighbor. Strengthen your priests by living constantly in them, with them, and through them, especially in times of loneliness and affliction, and when their life of sacrifice seems meaningless. Bless all their labors with abundant fruit. May they persevere their vocation until the end. May they our blessed mother Wrap them under your mantle and save, save them from all worldly distractions. May the souls to whom they minister be their joy and consolation in this world and in heaven, their beautiful and everlasting crown. Amen. Mary Queen of Priests, St. John Vianney, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our safeguard against the wiles and the wickedness of the devil. Restrain him, O God, God, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin and destruction of the souls. Amen. Yes, we know that this week we are celebrating the Divine Mercy Sunday. So tomorrow, after the 10 o'clock Mass, we'll expose the Holy Eucharist here right after the Mass and we'll be singing or we are praying the um, Divine Mercy Chaplet. You're most welcome to come and thank God for all his mercies that comes to our day-to-day -day life. And also, Night of the Race on Saturday 27th. You know admission is free, but the tickets are being sold for the horses. There are a few more only left over. And this Saturday, tomorrow, we'll have the coffee after the eight o'clock mass, you're most welcome to come in, coffee and bagels or breakfast will be served. And today, as you know, right after the mass, please come to the hall to see our new uh, parishioners or two new members and join with them for a dinner. So please come inside right after the mass and we'll go with them and enjoy the dinner together with them. So don't forget to go, don't go home, go to the hall to the uh, hall will be open, so you're all welcome to come and enjoy it. And please stand for the last one. Let us pray. Again, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. And Almighty God, bless you. Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The celebration is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining with us, and we'll pray each other. Love you all. Thank you, Father. As we go forth, please join in singing number 614 Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You.